next on Worcester News Tonight, less than 100 days till the Worcester Railers first game. We get an inside look at the team's practice rink. Plus, progress being made at Shrewsbury's Lake Lakeway Commons. An update on when retail space is expected to open up for shoppers. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Catherine Andrioli. We begin tonight with Congressman Jim McGovern reintroducing a bill last week to the House of Representatives. It would help cancer patients on Medicare who are undergoing chemotherapy treatments pay for wigs that are not currently covered. The bill was inspired by a meeting with Worcester resident Mary Aframe, who runs the Women's Image Center. Aframe says wigs can cost thousands of dollars and can be unaffordable for many patients without the help from their insurance provider. She says she's been pushing for this legislation for years and believes a wig is an important part of a patient's recovery and feeling confident during that process. When we talk about cancer diagnosis and you know you hear the one out of seven women with especially in the arena of breast cancer, that statistic gets to that one out of seven when a woman is older. You know when you're younger it's not one out of seven, it's as you age, the likelihood of a cancer diagnosis increases. It's just when you have a Medicare with a secondary insurer, because Medicare denies the wig, the secondary will not pick it up, so there's no coverage. And I see women every day and they don't have the coverage and you just want to be confident and kind of free of the diagnosis for a little while and wearing a wig can give you that confidence. Most private insurance companies already cover wigs for patients undergoing cancer treatments. Con Congressman McGovern's bill would recategorize wigs as durable medical equipment to provide coverage if a doctor certifies they are medically necessary. The bill has been referred to the House Committees of Energy and Commerce and Ways and Means, where it awaits further consideration. Mass DOT announcing they're going to replace the Commonwealth Avenue Bridge in Boston. The project also involves shutting a stretch of Commonwealth Avenue and the BU Bridge to most motor vehicles for nearly three weeks. Detours are expected for the drivers during peak commute hours. And today, many opted to take the train instead of driving for the evening commute. The projects are slated for the summer months, but train volume is also expected to be impacted and heavier traffic volume on the commuter rail. As you can see, people were using the service tonight. Many we spoke with say they can already see a difference in the number of people commuting by train. Increase uh, passengers. Uh, I mean, it's congested until you get to Westboro and then it clears out. Well, sometimes I take it uh, early at 625 and then I'll take it at 7 and I notice that at 7 there's crazy amounts more people and it's much harder to find a seat. And this is just the warm-up to heavier lifting coming later this month. The pike will be reduced to two lanes in each direction during peak travel times as more bridge work is done. And drivers can expect delays overnight on I-290 westbound in Worcester. MassDOT announced all westbound traffic will be detoured at exit 18 beginning tonight at 9 and lasting until 5 Tuesday morning. MassDOT says there will be signs directing traffic to exit 18 and then to the detour route that includes Lincoln Street and Major Taylor Boulevard. Traffic will then be directed to re-enter the highway on the East Central Street ramp at exit 16. Worcester police have made an arrest after a man robbed a convenience store armed with a syringe. 39-year-old David Cardwell, who is homeless, robbed the honey farms on Thursday with a hypodermic needle. Police say he demanded cigarettes and money and fled with an undisclosed amount of cash. After receiving a tip, police arrested Cardwell without incident while he was panhandling on an I-290 off-ramp. There are less than 100 days until the Worcester Railers Hockey Club's opening night. The organization has signed a handful of players, and within the next few months, their practice rink will be opening its doors for business. Olivia Lemon reports. An inside look at Worcester's Ice Center shows just how close the Worcester Railers Hockey Club is to their opening night. The last year and a half has been, or even year plus, has been a lot of the big moving parts and a lot of it's all coming together, but now we're down to the details. The ice center is where the team will spend 15 to 20 percent of their time practicing. Home games will be at the DCU center. 
President Mike Myers says junior leagues, high school and college hockey teams will play at the ice center when it's not being used by the railers. There will also be retail and two restaurants. The idea of bringing a, a rink down to an urban setting is is atypical these days. Most are found in suburban areas in in uh, you know um, office parks and things like that with more space. So this is sort of unique. After announcing their affiliation with the New York Islanders, Myers says the team is in the midst of signing players. We have some some really neat signings that I think people will be excited about. Uh, the signings we've had already uh, have been real veteran guys that have won at different levels. Um, and so we're really, you know, putting together a strong core of players. With less than 100 days until the puck is dropped in Worcester, the organization says they are happy to be bringing professional hockey back to the city. Two years here without hockey, people are excited. People are people are happy to have a team back. A lot of progress being made, a lot of, lot to still be done. So we're, uh, we're just going through our punch list like they do here at the construction site. And everybody's got a job and we're all just trying to do it. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. And the Crompton Park pool was a popular destination Monday since the pool's reopening after glass was found in the water. The pool reopened Friday after it had been drained, cleaned and refilled. A line formed outside the entrance just before the opening at Monday at around noon. Worcester residents say they're happy the pool was properly cleaned and are even more happy it's back open. That's because I babysit my grandchildren and I wanted to bring them over to the pool. It's a deep end, like there's a four feet deep. I just like learned how to go in there and jump in. That's my favorite part about it. We're going to go like down the slide and stuff and swim. I'm planning to go on the slide, have some fun, you know, go in the deep. And the city is reminding residents that glass containers are not permitted in the pool area. The city of Worcester is officially halfway to their goal of having 100 events on the Worcester Common in 2017. Worcester 100 is a project by the city to get more people out enjoying the Worcester Common. Currently, 50 events have taken place like out to lunch, yoga and movies on the Common. Project manager Che Anderson says so far Worcester 100 has been a success. The community reaction and engagement has been more than we could have imagined. I think we've seen everyone turn out from young children just running around having a blast. There were some two-year-olds outside for the movies in the common to older folks coming with their grandkids and just taking in a common that they hadn't seen this vibrant in years. So it's really been an amazing uh, transformative experience down there. Anderson says there are plenty more free events to look forward to like Shakespeare on the common this Wednesday and Thursday. Construction is underway on the Lakeway Commons residential and mixed-use retail space in Shrewsbury. Developments include 100,000 square feet of retail space added to the area adjacent to Route 9, something town officials say is a boost for the economy. A Whole Foods Market, Starbucks, and several other retail spaces are part of the redevelopment of the area, which was formerly the spot of Spags. The property also boasts 250 apartments and 14 townhouses. It will be a walkable space for both residents and shoppers. Shrewsbury's assistant town manager, Kristen Law, says this project is going to be a great addition to the town of Shrewsbury and will also benefit the taxpayers. Bags was a destination area for the town of Shrewsbury. It went fallow uh, and the tax base did decline in that area. With this revitalization, the tax base is certainly going to increase quite a bit. Uh, we will be getting meals tax from the Whole Foods, selling, uh, there will be a brew pub on the second floor. We'll be getting meals tax from the other restaurants. Excellent project within the town of Shrewsbury. It shows our revitalization in the Lakeway Business District, which goes from Route 9 on the bridge in Worcester. The project will give some great life to the area. The mixed use development is still in the construction phases. As you can see, Loss tells us some of the retail spaces are anticipated to open later.